Welcome to Beneath the Wing. Just like air passing over the wing of an aircraft provides lift, the people we meet can also give us lift in life by sharing their stories of strength and success, connecting us all. Beneath the Wing explores the stories of the men and women connected with the Minnesota Air National Guard's 133rd Airlift Wing. This special series is dedicated to our Airmen's first year stories. Hear from our wing's newest members, from enlisted aviators to electricians, aircraft maintainers to medics and all jobs in between. These airmen have transformed from high school students to dedicated and involved members of the 133rd Airlift Wing family. In their own words, they'll share how they chose their military job, the connection they have with the team, and how they've changed from young civilian to American Airmen. I'm your host, Wing Command Chief, Mark Legvold. Joining me today on Beneath the Wing First Year Stories is senior airman Olivia Van Dusen. Olivia grew up in Lakeville, graduated from Lakeville North High School, go Panthers, in uh, 2019, and joined us the spring of her senior year. She works with our Aeromedical Evacuation Squadron, which cares for patients leaving the battlefield and getting them to a hospital. We'll talk a little bit about her job, but first off, welcome, Olivia. Thank you. Glad you joined me. So let's talk about your journey to where you are now, because most of these first-year stories are literally that first year people mm -hmm. and you're a senior airman yes that's your third promotion yes. uh, on your journey right so you've been with us for a little while so a little bit yeah so I came in um, as an a1c or enlisted in as my position kind of I was able to be able to rank kind of take that rank right away yeah but yeah it's it's been four years but it feels like it's been like one <laughs> it, it, it yeah. does go fast out yeah. here. <laughs> you have had a whirlwind so Olivia you joined like I said you're the spring of your senior year mm -hmm. you left for basic training in the fall yes about yeah. two months after your um, graduating class from high school had all left for college correct right yeah how did it feel sitting around and watching them all leave and you're still hanging <laughs> Kind of scary. I think it took a little bit. I was like, did I make the right choice? Like, am I doing this right? And kind of that exhilaration of, I just did something really big. Like, this is life changing. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It is life changing. You, um, you sat there, you watched your peers leave. You had mm -hmm. been drilling with us as a high school student for mm -hmm. a little while. Correct. So you came in in civilian clothes, and while all of your squadron was doing their training and stuff, what did you do during that time? Yeah, a lot of it. They had um, a student flight section that I was a part of, and so I was able to, I was fortunate enough to go through with another recently enlisted and sit there with them. And um, a lot of it was just getting used to just how the unit worked and building relationships prior to leaving for basic and um, and going to the student flight here that they had at base too. Just super helpful and just preparing myself for basic training. Yeah. Um, part of that preparation too is just coming in and learning about the military, figuring out what job you're going to get. Mm -hmm. What brought you to choose the military over going to college after yeah. high school? Yeah. So while I was in my junior and senior year of high school, I did um, a I did PSEO, or it's post-secondary enrollment option. Okay. Um, basically, the like the high school that you're attending pays for your college. And so I'm like, sweet, I can go to college, get college credit and high school credit at the same time. Um, and so after two years, I came to my senior year and was like, I don't, I don't know what I want to do yet. And so military was a great, it got me right to like hands-on stuff right away, because originally it was going to be nursing was what I was going to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and so military training, it just seemed like the right option, because I'm like, it's going to get me kind of in patient care and getting hands-on stuff way faster than if I were to go just the normal college route. Awesome. You um, at some point made the choice, and you came mm -hmm. out, you met with a recruiter, uh, took a test, uh, did the whole thing. Yeah. Did you have anybody that had been in the military previously in your family that kind of steered you in this direction, or was this all Olivia, the high school junior senior, yeah. doing some exploration? <laughs> this was all me just doing exploration. I think I'm very independent, as my mom would say, and so just kind of this seemed exciting and new and just kind of a challenge for myself. So at some point you had to have a conversation with your parents that yes. <laughs> they they had not served? They have not, no. How did they? How did you approach that conversation as a young person trying to find some direction yeah. and choosing the military? Mm -hmm. How did you have that conversation? So that was actually, that I still remember it today, but it was pretty early in the morning. 
and I had been researching for a couple days now. And um, I was just putting together my breakfast. My mom was sitting on the couch. And I'm like, I wasn't even looking at her. I was in the fridge. And I'm like, I think I might join the military. And it was just super silent. And I kind of look over, and she's like, she's like, OK, let's talk about that a little bit. And, oh, okay. <laughs> and so she wasn't, I would say, I think she was more opposed to it than my dad was. But I think after they kind of set me up and said, you know, if you really want to do this, we want to see you. Um, you know, they're like, you're going to start going to the gym, like first thing in the morning and start showing us, like put in this effort now before we kind of let you go and enlist. And they're like, ultimately it's your decision, Yeah. but kind of put in the work now and show us that this is really what you want. So they were worried about the physical part. They were worried about the physical part. I think just that idea of, I mean, military being portrayed as like a lot of deployments and that just the safety and yeah. they're like, if this is something you want to do, like you got to you got to commit to and understand that commitment, which I'm glad they did. <laughs> yeah, so you, you showed that commitment to your folks first before coming out and showing yes. it to us. Yes, correct. <laughs> that sounds like a really good plan. Overall, yeah. they were supportive, or you said they were a little nervous, right, the safety yes. thing? yeah. Um, but then they came around and were more supportive? Absolutely. Did they come yeah. out here the day you enlisted with us? They did, and it was a drill weekend, too, so they got to meet the entire unit. <laughs> How did that go for their for your parents? Yeah, yeah. I think it was a little overwhelming, um, just being in, just kind of having that realization of our daughter just enlisted. <laughs> but um, I think it was just a once in a lifetime opportunity to just yeah. being able to see see me up there. I know that they were proud. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, be, I'll bet they were. Yeah. Um, so you, you enlisted, finished out your student flight time, and at some point, Olivia, we put you on a plane and we sent you down to Lackland Air Force Base in mm -hmm. Texas. How were your nerves going into that situation? Yeah. And tell us about that first day or two sure. of basic. Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> I remember waiting in the airport and you get this sheet with where exactly you're supposed to go and where um, you just kind of hang out in the airport or in this room that they have. But um, I remember sitting there and just like you didn't have your, or you had your phone. But you were just sitting there and you were like, what did I just do? Like, I'm here now. And you just are so nervous. You're waiting there for hours, not knowing when, um, you know, when the MTI is going to come storming in, in and start screaming at you. And <laughs> um, But then eventually they came in and it was just everyone got quiet and you, they just were very stern. And you just did what they told you to and hope you didn't get <laughs> pointed out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. that's that. You kept that up for seven whole weeks, right? Yes, just, yep. Just, just keep quiet and hope you don't get pointed <laughs> right, out. Right, right. Um, you, you got to Lackland, you went through basic training, and there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of learning that goes on in there yes. really, really quickly. Yeah, for those sure. Those MTIs or military training instructors are, yeah, they're really stern. Mm -hmm. Are they like that the whole time? Yeah, so I think towards the end of the months um, or towards the end of the weeks, you ours at least kind of eased up on us and made us really feel like, wow, you did something big. Like you should be proud of yourself. And so there was definitely this transition of almost kind of building that trust between each other and knowing that, okay, they're an authority figure and recognizing that, but then also like, you just did really, like you just did something really cool. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. it is, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool deal there at it the is. end. It's kind of like your parents saying, hey, you got to go to the gym mm -hmm. and you got to show us you're committed before we're comfortable with you going away and joining. And yes. they, they're stern and kind of heavy at first, and then mm -hmm. eventually you're more of a part of our family here in the, right. in the Air Force. Um, getting done with basic training, did your mm -hmm. folks come down for the graduation? They did, yep. Tell yeah. us about the graduation ceremony at the end. Oh, I loved it. That was my favorite part, but you, um, I remember training for it, or you would practice for probably a week or two, you know, and you just get to the actual day and then the music starts playing and you just start marching out there. And I've never felt more proud of myself of what I've accomplished just because you're in your blues, you're like kind of fancy uniform and you're just marching out there like with this, these crowds of people just like screaming and yelling. And obviously you have to keep your composure and no smiling or anything like that. But man, it was probably one of the best feelings I've ever had. Uh, you, when you, when you go through something like that, Mm -hmm. You really have to overcome some things to feel that sense of pride at the end. Yeah. What was the most difficult part of basic training for you? Yeah. I think the most difficult part was being away from family. I think a lot of that was, like, our family is very tight-knit. And so I've never spent that long away from them. 
and um, you'd get phone calls every once in a while, but I mean, you're under the pressure of, you have like two minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there wasn't a lot to talk about, but um, I think it was just really encouraging as like right before I left, my family or my dad had put together this journal of um, every day there was a journal entry from someone in my family and extended family members of just a memory or a photograph. So each day I'd have something to read from them if a letter hadn't come. Oh. And so that was that really kept me grounded and like, okay, I have a family and support system back home and um, just being able to rely um, just on God and prayers and just being able to kind of have that community of believers too, even in the women that I went to basic with, just helped tremendously. <laughs> you mentioned that. And uh, one thing that we don't necessarily talk about too much regarding the military is that sense of, of faith mm -hmm. um, and people's relationship with the, the God of their upbringing or the God that they are, they've chosen at that moment. Yeah. Um, there are so many different faiths that mm -hmm. are able to serve and do serve. How was your faith strengthened while you were at basic training? Yeah, it's a great question. So I didn't realize this um, until I was actually there, but every Sunday they had um, different church services that you were able to go to. And a lot of them, not just um, like Christian or Protestant service, but they also had Catholic Mass, I think, and then some other ones, and you kind of had your pick. Um, but Sundays really were just more kind of relaxed. I'd put quotations around that, but um, you got to go to church, and then, you know, you're sitting and rooming with 50 other women, and so you just kind of get on to conversations where faith comes up, and I had a great group of probably like three or four girls that I was just able to talk and relate to, and I think that that helped and strengthened my faith even more there. So even though th there was a lot of differences in not just faith, but other things as well, you just felt so connected because you were part of a bigger picture. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Makes total sense. It, mm -hmm. And you developed some really close relationships with the women that you went through basic training with. Yes. Still in touch? Yes, through Facebook, yes. Oh, <laughs> that, that is just great. Yeah. Um, got done with basic training, did the graduation, mm -hmm. Uh, your folks came down. It, mm -hmm. it is, it's a very emotional, I've had a chance to attend one yes. in, in my, besides mine, uh, mm -hmm. attend one and it is, it's so emotional mm -hmm. and it's so fantastic to see all of these folks like you joining our big Air Force family. Yeah. Uh, Olivia, you went off to tech school after that. What was technical? What was tech school <laughs> like for you? Where did you go first of all? Yeah. And it, can you explain the first you know, week or so of, of tech school? For sure, yeah. So I went to Fort Sam. Um, it's a joint, I think, Army and Air Force base there. But a lot of that was just the medical, like, head knowledge of it all. Right and there so, in San Antonio? Yep, okay. yeah. It was like 20 minutes away from Lackland. And so, um, you know, you're all excited. You just graduated. You get on this bus, and they put you over there. You get off, and then they, I mean, they have MTLs there. And so then, like, people start yelling at you again, and you're like, oh. I just graduated from this. <laughs> and so I think the first week was, again, just a culture shock of, okay, I'm in the real military now. I'm wearing the uniform and doing military things and what that, it's, yeah, you're just kind of living what you've trained for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of it going to class or was the, was the PT, the physical training and mm -hmm. all that hard stuff, a, a distant memory of basic <laughs> training or were you right. still doing that? Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, we were still doing that. Um, most of our PT sessions, we'd get up around 4, 4.30, and then PT before class. And then normal class days, I think they ended around 4, and so you had plenty of time to study. I mean, you were just head in the books, had no time to really do anything else because it was such a condensed class. Sure. Yeah. And you, you chose a healthcare field, right? I did, yeah. Um, because you were going to go into nursing. Mm -hmm. You had some college credit before you graduated high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you able to apply that college credit? I'm sorry. Were you able to gain college credit while you were down there? Yes. Yeah, and quite a bit too. I was actually calculating it up today, um, and I think my transcript, without even talking about flight school, but just just that training I'd went to, I got nearly 35, 40 credits, which helped a lot. <laughs> so 35 to 40 credits. Mm -hmm. You basically went to basic training mm -hmm. after your peers from high school had left for college. Yes. And when did you get back to the Twin Cities after yeah. basic training and tech school? Sure. I think I got back. Let me see. I have it written down here. 
um, June of 2020. Okay, so you got back after their first year of college. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you had more college credit than they did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty you, sweet deal. And you got paid the whole time? And I got paid the whole time. And free, <laughs> free camouflage clothes. And free camouflage clothes. It couldn't get any better than that. Um, it it kind of gets lonesome and it's hard mm -hmm. when you're away from family. And Texas is like a whole other country way down there. Yeah. What did you do to stay connected with your family, mm -hmm. uh, but also branch out a little bit while you were there as a new member of the Air Force family, yeah. new member of the Air National Guard with with a basically new family? Yeah, yeah. How did you balance those two things? How did you stay mm -hmm. connected and how did you grow, I guess? For sure. Um, so it's kind of difficult just because while I was there, um, or I graduated basic and just the, um, the talk of COVID was just beginning. And so soon comes March and then it hits. And so our base is on lockdown. And so a lot of the freedoms that we would have had were really restricting. And so I think that took quite a toll on just mental health and being able to, um, just get out and kind of do things I enjoy. But a lot of the the time that I had with my family turned into like FaceTime calls on like a daily basis. And, um, you know, as your roommate that you're rooming with, you get really close with them just because they're going through the same exact thing. And just so building that community with the people in your class and doing study groups. And I mean, that was kind of all we could do. And so mm -hmm. it really helped. <laughs> well, you, you had some good social personal interactions while you were going through that yes. where a lot of the uh, young folks your age doing the college experience ended up leaving their dorms and going back home and mm -hmm. hibernating in a house and <laughs> right. doing everything by Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. too bad, right? No, not too bad. <laughs> right. um, getting done with tech school mm -hmm. uh, with a whole boatload of college credits, you get back to us in June of that mm -hmm. year, June of 2020. Um, your experience coming back mm -hmm. was a whole lot more different, but you still had some training that you needed to do when you got back. Yes. Uh, can you talk us through how you're an aeromedical evacuation technician? Correct. Okay, good. I'm glad I got that <laughs> yep. right. Thanks. Um, there's a lot of medical training that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Where Where did you get your hands on training when you got back? Yeah, so that was actually right after um, I was at Fort Sam. So I was there for about four months. And then right after that, I got shipped off to um, Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. And so for normally it would be Nellis okay. Air Force Base. Yes. What city is that close to? Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So they sent you to Las Vegas. Yes. Okay, to yeah. learn. Yeah, to learn. <laughs> Super fun. I'll bet. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so I did that for a month. Normally it's two, but with COVID they kind of downsized it a bit. But um, for a whole month I was working basically like the equivalent. I, had a, I was a, like a medical technician at a hospital. So working in the ER, um, I did around – some like rounds in the OB and GYN type, you know, area. <laughs> Did you get to deliver a baby? I saw one get delivered. Okay. Dad totally passed out. And I like didn't even catch him. I like backed away. And I, I just wasn't, I, yeah, I still think about that day. I'm like, I should have caught him. But <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of fun. I'll bet. But yeah, so I did a lot of my hands on there in the hospital. Then you got to come back to Minnesota. Then I got to come back home. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and and now that you've been in the Air Force and you were yes. you've been doing it every single day of the week. Yep. Um, wearing the uniform every day. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly you're back home, right? Yeah. Did you move back home, by the way? I did. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I moved back to my home. Back to Lakeville. Correct. And what was the next step in your is it now starting Olivia's <laughs> regular life their her civilian life or right. did you have more time here at the military base yeah so I had even more time here um I had about a month that I did at the VA working the same thing I did at Nellis um so that was pretty fun and then after that that's when I kind of started my normal life yeah. <laughs> pursuing a college degree and then just getting back into kind of the rhythm of things after being in the military for so long it yeah. just is Kind of almost like a culture shock again, learning like, okay, I can eat and walk at the same time. <laughs> Isn't that yeah, a nice change? Yeah, or talk is. on the phone or while walking. Phone, sure. right. <laughs> we have rules, right? Yeah, right. Some of them are, well, you put your hat on when you go outside. Exactly, yeah. That, it took I me don't a know while why, to unlearn that. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Um, your job with us, mm -hmm. Olivia, is um, you are one of our flying medics. Correct. So you spend some time on a plane. Yes. And, and not a lot of people know that being a part of the Air Force, you don't necessarily fly planes, 
-hmm. You don't necessarily fly on planes. It takes a lot of work to just get those things up in the air and give them a safe place to land and park mm -hmm. and get fixed and um, all of the things and keep the people that work on them healthy. For sure. But you're one of the folks that flies on the plane. Yes. What's your real job? Can you kind of explain that to somebody that's not yeah. really articulating it well now right, and just trying right. to intro it? <laughs> yeah. So kind of how I explain it to people outside the military is because um, I have my EMT training through Fort Sam. And so I'll say, I'm basically an EMT, but I do everything on the back of a plane. And so kind of that emergency medical or medicine kind of response, but we're taking patient, picking up patients, keeping them stable, and then dropping them off where they need to be. Sounds so simple. You sound when, simple. When yeah. you say you're an EMT, <laughs> correct? Um, emergency medical technician is something that people have to go to school, get licensed in, and there's mm -hmm. a big board test. You can get certified in it. Yes. Do you have a civilian certification through a military school? So I do not. No. Nope. So I got, well, yes, actually I do. Yeah. So at Fort Sam, it's um, an accelerated EMT course. And then you do the, like the whole board exam at the end. And so in three months, you're fully certified and like ready to go. <laughs> you get your, you're nationally registered as an EMT. Yes. Yeah. That's a pretty great deal. It is. What are the challenges in doing emergency medical care and treatment on the back of a mm -hmm. plane? I mean, I think of these big things. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm getting on a plane and I'm flying to St. Louis, for example. It's not a, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I'm in a chair. It's pretty smooth. So what's the big deal? Why do yeah. we need to have people like you mm -hmm. in the military? Oh, goodness. Yeah. So we kind of learned um, when I went to flight school this or last year, um, you kind of learn about what what flying really does to the body. And there's just so many things where you, you know, just normal medical stuff down here is so kind of just, I mean, it's just thrown like everything is almost thrown out the window just with now you kind of add in the, OK, we're up in the air. Our machines are different you know, p symptoms might be different than normal. And so just looking at kind of those, um, just the slight changes that being in an airplane and then just the resources too. You don't have a whole stock room. You're carrying two duffel bags on and that's yeah. kind of what you get. And you've got to sustain a, a patient, a passenger, yes. yeah. for kind of a long trip, huh? Yes, yep. <laughs> uh, what's the longest trip that you've been on? So far, yeah. So the longest I've been on, so I didn't fly much um, since cross training, but the longest flight I was on was a training flight. I think it was four hours, so not super long. But I mean, deployed locations, it could be twice to triple that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So getting a patient out of a deployed location and all the way to a, you take them to a hardened facility, a regular hospital, Correct. right, where they yes. can receive all the care that they need yes. and sustain life through that. Yeah. That's a lot of responsibility for an 18-year-old. It is. Or 19-year-old. <laughs> right, right. That's a lot of responsibility. It is. Do you feel like your training got you ready for that? Absolutely. Yeah, especially going to, um, when I went to flight school at Wright-Patterson in Ohio, it, I mean, the whole last month that you're there, they train you in these scenarios where, I mean, you're patient dies. And so it's kind of like this, um, like you have this realization of like, I have a human life in my hands, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just understanding how to work under that pressure and under that stress, you come out of that school feeling like I got this. And, you know, and you have a team of two other, um, or, you know, three, four other people helping you and aiding you too, which helps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Olivia, you have made a choice here after being with us for you know four short years. Four short years. Yeah. <laughs> four short years. Mm -hmm. um, you you have made a choice to change career paths. Yes. Now, normally, when somebody ch changes career path, they start back at the bottom and they're mm -hmm. learning all the new skills. Uh, you usually have to go to a different company. Mm -hmm. Different. Uh, there's there's a. It's hard to make a career change. Yeah. But you made a choice. Can you tell us about that choice? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so about, I would say, two and a half years in, maybe three, um, I had pretty much fully gone through all the training I needed um, for the air evac job. And so um, I reached a point where shortly after I got back from one of the trainings, I um, was diagnosed with depression. And it 
kind of threw a loop in my plans. And so I really had to reevaluate where I was putting my time and what was kind of causing maybe some of the stress. And so um, after it took a long time to come to the decision, but after um, talking with people in my unit and realizing, you know, maybe it might be best if I take a step back and um, maybe just kind of explore different options. And maybe this, maybe the stress of this job might be adding to some of that. And yeah. You, you mentioned that you were diagnosed with depression. Correct. What brought you to that? Do you mind me asking? What oh, brought absolutely. you to that? What were some of the signals? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Olivia, you, you told, shared the story of your parents coming in and watching you enlist. Yeah. Um, all those people that were there for your enlistment, mm -hmm. uh, how did they help you along the way? Yeah, for sure. Um, my mom was actually a big, um, she had just a big hand in kind of getting myself to the point where I could realize, okay, this is an issue. And um, I think a lot of it was that last little leg at training, being away from family, it just was kind of hitting me. And um, I think it was realizing, okay, like I'm, I'm sleeping a lot. I'm not finding a lot of enjoyment in kind of doing things I used to love. And, um, and even just going out with friends and it was just kind of, it was just exhausting. And so I remembered coming back and just feeling like I just couldn't get into my groove again. And that's my mom was like, I think you might need to go see a doctor. And so that kind of started that, um, those series of conversations where I wonder what this is and let's dig into this a little bit. Yeah. 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 At some point, you know, you, you go through that process and that's mm -hmm. pretty much a conversation between your mom and you and a mm -hmm. doctor. But in order for us, the military to have somebody that we can send forward, if we need to mm -hmm. send forward, your health gets shared with us. Yes. And at some point you had to come to your military family and let us mm -hmm. know about that. Yeah. What was that conversation like? Yeah, so I think um, having that conversation, I think I was really nervous going into it, um, mainly just in the flying community being put on medication um, or even just, you know, change in health status is, is really important. And, <laughs> and that can easily take you off of flying for a little bit. And so... I think my fear came from, okay, if I tell them what's going on, I could potentially lose my job and not be able to fly anymore. And I love flying. <laughs> and so um, I went in, was nervous, but as soon as I was like, okay, this is where I'm at, this is what's going on with me, they were completely like, that is totally okay. Like, we are here for you. We want you to keep your job, and we're going to do everything in order for us to be able to keep you here. <laughs> to totally doesn't fit what you would do. No, yeah, thought, huh? not at all. <laughs> so you go in with a little bit of nervousness. Who did you tell first of all? Who was your first, um, first person that you shared that with? Yeah. So the person um, that I shared it with was um, my senior master, Sergeant Manjas. Um, he's kind of the, basically keeps um, all the training or one of his duties is just keeping training for people getting dates and all this stuff kind of in order. And mm -hmm. so I was prepared to leave for SEER in like a week. And so I had to sit down and be like, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. SEER is a pretty intense uh, course search. No, sorry. Give me what SEER means. S -E -R -E. Yes. Oh, no, I have to think. Um, oh, what is it? Something evade rescue or no, escape rescue and evade or some like kind of like survival training. Survival I would say. training yeah. just in yeah. case a plane goes right. down. Right. <laughs> That's stressful. Yes. But yeah. you went and you told you told your supervisor, you told mm -hmm. your boss, actually your boss's boss. Yeah. Hey, I I, I have this. I'm struggling with this, mm -hmm. and um, I think I need to make a change. Is yeah. that how you did that? Yeah. So at the time, I didn't know if I wanted to cross train or not, and I hadn't identified the military as being kind of the main stressor yet, and so. Um, that conversation was more so, this is what's going on. I think I need to put a pause and figure some stuff out civilian side. And then I'll let you know kind of as updates come to me. And that was that was okay? And that was okay. They're like totally fine. Take all the time you need. We're here if you need anything. So, Olivia, you've, you've made the choice to change careers. Yes. But you're not leaving your military unit, your military no. family. Yeah. What's your new job? 
So now I'm going into the admin side. So um, I'll be working with the same exact people. It'll just be a change in title and some duties. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Do you get to go to a whole new tech school? Yep. So I'll go back to Fort Sam actually. Um, and But this training, instead of four months, it'll be one month. So I'm pretty excited about that. That sounds pretty darn good. Yes. <laughs> and this time you go down to Fort Sam, there's Correct. no COVID. Yep, yep. And you are not coming straight from basic training. Right. So are they going to treat you differently? Yes, which I'm super excited about. But I will be um, treated as a prior service member. And so um, I don't know exactly what that will look like, but I think that normally takes the role of being kind of have that leadership in a classroom or just being um, more treated as, okay, you're in the Air Force and you've been in the Air Force, so we're going to treat you like an adult. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to manage yourself through that right, time. Right, right. It sounds pretty darn good. Yeah. 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 And no, uh, do you lose pay for that. Yeah. So as far as pay, um, base pay I won't lose at all or what I, like my enlisted pay. Um, I did get a like a 20 grand bonus, sign-on bonus for this air evac job. Hang so on just a second. Yeah. You were 18 years old when you joined us. Correct. We gave you a $20,000 bonus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Straighten the savings. Not too bad. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So give a little bit of that back just because you have to cross train. Yep. So I'll give half of it back because I've done half of um, my required service or what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. And so they'll take 10 grand, but I get to keep half of that. Not too shabby. Is, yeah. Pretty and you, great. And you get to stay out here. And I get to stay out here. Why is staying with your unit important mm -hmm. to you? Yeah, I think one of the main reasons I wanted to stay was because I had spent the last four years building these relationships with people and going through training. Um, and so not not losing, like not having to start from ground zero again, <laughs> you know, like I've already at the, I had those relationships and um, I mean, two, it just seemed like an interesting transition or a great transition to go from um, being a flyer to now admin, but knowing exactly what they go through for training and having that background knowledge, it just seemed seamless. <laughs> so you have this operational empathy then. That, yes. You totally yep. get their job. Yep. <laughs> um, is the goal to stay in admin or is the goal to get back to flying? Yeah. What do you want to do, do with the rest of your time out here? Right, right. now you have two jobs that you're trained in, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so right now, um, I think admin is where I'm going to stay. Um, I know my contract is up in a couple years, and I still haven't decided whether I'm going to stay or um, go. We'll kind of see what this new job is like and if I enjoy it. Yeah. But, yeah, I think I'd eventually love to return back to flying, but we'll see what the cards hold. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah. Olivia, you are uh, you're a busy young lady, young, yes. young airman. <laughs> um on top of all of your military uh, requirements, you're also going to college, correct? Yes. So you've taken all these college credits and you're applying them. What is yeah. what are you majoring in and where is your school? Yeah, so after a couple degree changes, I finally settled on care ministries at Crown College in St. Bonifacius. All right, what does yeah. care ministries entail? Yeah, so it's a two-year degree, um, and I kind of describe it as you get your foot in the door for um, being like a licensed counselor. So I'll finish the degree and I won't be licensed. I don't know if I'll pursue that, but um, a lot of the core classes are around like psychology and and that sort of thing. Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot to have done in the first four years. Yes. <laughs> One of the things that we didn't talk about was you returned during COVID. Yes. Yep. Did you work militarily during COVID? Yes. Yeah, I did. So while at the VA... Um, I, you know, COVID was kind of at its peak. And so a lot of the, you know, face masks and we had the, um, the face shields and it was exhausting, but also you kind of left feeling like, okay, like I just, like I'm doing my part. Like it feels good to now kind of apply some of what I was learn learning. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Olivia, I want you to think back to what uh, younger Olivia Van Dusen was like mm -hmm. sitting at Lakeville North. Um, maybe the Panthers are Panthers are playing hockey that yeah. night. You know, there's there's all that high school stuff that's going on. Yeah, and it's a busy busy time in life. But mm -hmm. you're, you mentioned you started thinking about this your junior year, then your senior year hit, and you know you're still a young person in high mm -hmm. school. Four years later, how are you a different person? Yeah. And how has this job out here changed you? Yeah, 
That's a great question. I think one thing that I always say is just the amount of confidence that I've gained since being in the military, going through basic training and realizing, wow, I can do a lot more than I give myself credit for. Um, and not in any prideful way, but just realizing that I, I can do things and I can, um, I have the, you know, the flexibility and just like the, um, mental capacity to go do something that excites me and challenges me and is really hard, but being able to come out the other end and being just really empowered and, Hey, what else can I do? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sky's the limit, right? Yeah, right. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. You, um, you have the opportunity to talk to, um, somebody that might be considering this, what mm -hmm. would you tell them? Is this yeah. something that you would recommend to them and why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would completely recommend it. Um, just looking at the college benefits alone, especially if you're struggling financially for college, I mean, there is no quicker way to get to any sort of hands-on portion of job, like a job training, um, than the military. You get, you know, for me it was, I enlisted and less than a year later I was face-to-face -face with patients working with them. And I think that's been the most impactful thing for me, just being able to kind of like get right to it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's not that long, you know, process of learning and getting there. Stressful, but worth it. Yeah. It, right out of high school and seeing right. patients within a year <laughs> is yeah. a pretty exceptional transformation. And Olivia, we're glad that you're staying with the 133rd. Yeah, me too. Glad that you're staying with the Aeromeds. I've been talking with senior airman Olivia Van Dusen, a Lakeville North graduate and a certified, nationally board certified EMT, <laughs> aeromedical evacuation technician, and now going into her second career with us in four years. Olivia, thanks so much for joining me and sharing your first year's for sure. story with me. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been great. As always, thanks for joining me on Beneath the Wing, where those connected with the 133rd Airlift Wing, Minnesota Air National Guard share their stories of strength and success. We will be releasing a new first-year story each Tuesday and Thursday throughout the month of February, March, and April. If you think you are someone whose story could be a part of our Wings family here in Minnesota and are seeking direction for your next step in life, or you know someone who is, please explore our opportunities at 133aw.ang.af.mil and share these podcasts. If you're outside our local area but are still interested in serving in the Air National Guard in your state or territory, goang.com will get you started. That's goang.com. As always, I'd like to thank our public affairs section, especially Amy Lovegren, for her post-production and release work. I've been your host, Wing Command Chief Master Sergeant Mark Lakevold. <laughs>